I'll have, be honest with you. First thing I'm going to mention right up front is, is it's free. Uh, I, I like the this, this, this service when, when it's free because, you know, you can tie up a lot of money in, in different services. And from experience, I found out that a, you, sometimes you can pay a lot of money and you, you may not be getting that much out of it. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. It's November 6, 2013. I'm Logan Burgess. To my right here is Brock Shimano to help break down the action that we saw here in the grain complex on a relatively quiet trade day for Wednesday. Let's jump into fire tip and see where we closed out the action. Corn trading down three and three quarters of a cent. We had some relatively strong ethanol numbers reported. Once again, unable though to bring in the bulls for corn market. Soybeans found some technical buyers today trading up four and three quarters on the day. We've been watching that area 1250 here recently and once again that acted as support. Chicago and Kansas City wheat both trading lower as well, down two and three quarters in Chicago, off five and three quarters in Kansas City. As I said, Brock, relatively quiet trade day here on a Wednesday. Uh, really the focus of the grain market remains. What is the USDA going to report on Friday? Specifically, how high is yield going to go for corn and soybeans? I know you focused on corn this morning. What are we looking at there? You know, we did take the take a look at the average of the analyst guess for what they're expecting in Friday's USDA WASA report. And we know it's been a couple of months since we actually got an update from the USDA. So this report's good. This report is going to have a little bit of a heightened importance on it as we right. move into Friday. Uh, if you take a look at the table that we have set up here, you can see that uh, harvested acreage is expected to be lowered by about one million uh, bushels there, or one million acres. Uh, yield is actually looking to move higher by about 3.6 uh, bushels per acre, and production is looking, uh, consequently, production is looking to move higher by about uh, one. 160 million bushels there. Yeah. So uh, the bottom line here is the numbers to focus on is going to be the harvested acreage and the yield and how that's going to overall affect the production figures. We know coming into the end of the harvest that uh, we saw good to excellent ratings continue to increase throughout the end of the right. growing season. I think that's really where we're going to see that take effect into the into the yield uh, uh, on the bushels per acre there. Yeah. That's really where we're going to see that show up and, and those are going to be a couple numbers that we're going to have to watch here coming into Friday. Yeah, certainly, you know, if we change slides here quick and take a look at what the trade's expecting for soybeans, it's really uh, quite a very similar story as to what people are looking for out of corn. On average, the trade's looking for 450,000 acres to be taken off uh, harvested acreage, but that yield number once again is expected to be kind of the big driver there. On average, the trade's looking for a yield higher uh, of 1.42 bushels per acre from what the USDA reported in September. And uh, conversely there, production expected to be raised there by 72 million bushels. So, uh, you know, not really to the degree that corn is going to, is expected to improve here, but certainly uh, kind of a relatively similar story. Throughout the end of harvest, as you said, Brock, we saw those good to excellent ratings improve. And just from talking to farmers, it sounds like a lot of people were really pleasantly surprised with how the crop turned out. Certainly good to hear in terms of production, but certainly uh, this could add to a little bit of uh, bearish sentiment on this market uh, in Friday's report. You know, yesterday we did talk about ending stocks and what the average of the analysts, analysts guess were yeah. for ending stocks were for pretty big increases for corn and for soybeans. Wheat was to be a little bit uh, a little bit on the downside as far as ending stocks are yeah. concerned, but um, you know, we might see some demand revisions as well. Export sales have been running quite a bit ahead of pace for both soybeans and for wheat, so we could see some revisions there. Uh, corn's about on par with what the USDA is expecting, so I don't anticipate anything there but uh, we know for corn that ethanol has been running pretty good over the last part of this marketing year. Yeah certainly so it wouldn't be surprising if we saw some demand side numbers but you know in general it seems like the production side increases that we're going to see is really going to dwarf anything that we see on the demand side. In general that's certainly what the trade's expecting uh, and we've really seen that reflected in the trade action here over the last several weeks maybe a month. Uh, really expectations are for, or were for the USDA to make some pretty big revisions here on Friday. Uh, we'll have to see exactly what they do though on Friday. Certainly give the market some direction here uh, as we move into winter when the focus is really going to turn to the demand side. But right now uh, production is king. Keep an eye on these numbers that we detailed here today. Tomorrow on Grain TV we're going to go into detail on the demand side and how that relates to ending stocks. But this is what we're looking at here for production. Thanks a lot for joining us here on Grain TV on a Wednesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow to break down those ending stock numbers and go into the export sales report.